we recently acquired an interesting chemical, sodium hypophosphite. It's the sodium salt of hypophosphorus acid, which can apparently be used together with iodine instead of red phosphorus to reduce alcohols to the corresponding alkane. First we wanted to see if we could prepare the acid from the salt. So we started by measuring out 100 grams of sodium hypophosphide crystals. These are the dihydrate salt. The theory was to see if we could perform the displacement reaction using a strong mineral acid. So we measured out 30 mL of concentrated hydrochloric acid initially. This is half the molar equivalent. We placed the salt on a hot plate and then added the acid to the crystal. These seemed to dissolve and a much whiter colored solid appeared in the suspension. This is a good sign that sodium chloride is being created and precipitated due to the concentration. We gave the mixture a good stir and heated it on a hot plate. We then prepared a further 30 mL of concentrated hydrochloric acid, which should make up to 1 mole of HCl per mole of sodium hypophosphite. We added this to the hot mixture and stirred again. You can see that the white crystalline deposit is quite thick and different to the original salt. We stirred the mixture for a few minutes and heated up to around 80 degrees C, then allowed it to cool right down to nearly zero degrees in order to precipitate as much of the sodium chloride salt as possible. On chilling for a few hours the salt fell to the bottom of the beaker leaving the clear solution. So we set up for vacuum filtration and removed the white salt from the liquid. We allowed all the liquid to filter through and for the salt to become reasonably dry. We ended up recovering 40 grams of sodium chloride as you can see here. It's slightly damp but even so according to the stoichiometry of the reaction we would expect 47 grams to be produced in total. So this is not bad at all. Our filtrate is slightly yellow due to our filter not being totally clean. However it tells us that we've got a lot of hypophosphorus acid as hypophosphite and hydrogen ions in this solution. So we transferred this into a 250 ml flask to see if we could distill some of the water. We added a small magnetic stir bar so that we could stir to prevent the mixture from bumping. And then used a hot plate to heat the mixture with a simple distillation apparatus setup. We also used a vacuum pump to help drive off the water at a lower temperature. We know that hypophosphorus acid decomposes temperatures higher than about 100 degrees C to form explosive and toxic phosphine gas, so we wanted to be very careful about this. Soon we saw some condensation appearing, and we insulated the flask using some aluminium foil to make the distillation more efficient. Despite all these measures the distillation of water was incredibly slow, and after an hour we had only managed to obtain around 10 ml of water distilled. At this point we notice a white precipitate, presumably more sodium chloride forming in the boiling flask, so we allowed the mixture to cool at this point and chilled it down again to zero degrees. Once again we filtered this on a vacuum, and we noticed that the liquid was now actually quite viscous and syrupy. We got a further 4 grams of sodium chloride from this filtration, so we figured that we must have a relatively strong hypophosphorus acid solution by now. And here's the filtrate. Exactly 100 grams in weight and measuring 74 mL giving a density of 1.35. The pure acid has a literature density of 1.49, so this is looking good. So let's first put it to the test by reducing some iodine. We place a small amount in a beaker and added a spatula of solid iodine at room temperature.
I'd say that worked pretty well. Maybe a bit too well. Let's now see if the acid can be decomposed by heat. This will also tell us how safe it is to boil for reflux. We heated a small amount in a beaker on a hot plate. First we got some condensation, then very slight boiling, then tiny explosions. So we've definitely got some good stuff here and we'll have a go in a future video at using it to reduce an alcohol. In the meantime we'll leave you with our final experiment, evaporating the liquid to dryness on a glass petri dish. Enjoy! The hot plate is only at about 150 degrees C, so this is a good warning about the reactivity of this compound. Huge clouds of white phosphorus pentoxide are generated as the phosphine gas produced spontaneously combusts in air. Stay tuned.